Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I am Kevin and thank you for joining me. Today we are making Toolville. Welcome back folks. If you've been following along, you know that Billy Joe has been working in the shop lately and we also brought in a new 10 inch benchtop joiner. And that has helped us get a handle on the backlog of customer work. We have become more efficient in our workflow by investing into the joiner but the extra set of hands really creates a need for more work surfaces. A few months ago, Tyler and I built this quarter bench area. We had planned on putting the radial arm saw back into service following a restoration. A restoration will happen. The saw is 58 years old, but our evolving dungeon workshop and priorities mean Frank needs to move. Does anybody else name their tools? So BJ had a fantastic idea. She thought it would be fitting to let Frank do what he does best and look good. Live up here with some other classics and serve as a backdrop to best utilize that space. This was a great option for the space that previously had a stack of pallet boards. We were reusing them to create a platform to rest atop the foundation and our slat wall. It deserves to be in a workshop instead of a landfill, guys. Again, the saw is 58 years old. The saw isn't terribly heavy, but it needed to be awkwardly lifted from the bench top to the upper space with only a few inches to spare between the floor joists. I like how the saw looks up there. And with a few more pallet boards, we can better utilize this area by arranging my classic tools and placing the daily use tools easily in arm's reach. Leave me a comment about any tool or item you see that you would like an explanation about. This way I can be certain I deliver individually tailored content for my subscribers. The space below this corner cabinet was also underutilized. You folks that sell woodworking know how valuable flat surfaces are. What are you doing, Tyler? Making shelves for Billy Joe. Look at that. That is awesome. Like most of your shops, there are many products and projects in various stages. So those things need a space to live during that time. So Tyler is going solo on that shelf build. Now that the saw and the other tools are moved, it has opened up more work surfaces for us. I added a quick and dirty shelf and LED light that helps set up our primary glue area on top of this three drawer cabinet from recycled material. Along with these two shelves here for glue ups and other projects in process is just a good transformation of the space. This has also opened up an area, basically a staging area for our products and projects in queue. And this has also given me a, quite a few ideas on how to transform a little more of this space. Many of our tools are going to be placed on the slat wall that are our daily use items. And Tyler is getting good at making some widgets. Like these movable platforms for the heart charger and sander. The DeWald even has a convenient place to live. My Stanley number 32 has a good spot that uses some hidden DIY slat wall brackets like the other ones. My bandsaw sled and my new Forstner bit rack uses them too. Here's a slat wall widget I am working on. It is a lathe chisel rack using spalted maple and some subscriber gifted Craftsman chisels. So it's been a real busy week and I haven't been able to get my trunnion adjusted on my table saw or my fence adjusted using my new jig. Some folks may give me weird looks for having a dial indicator in a woodworking shop, but I'm not looking for a machinist type tolerance in my project. I'm looking for accuracy in my machine, which results in a more accurate project overall and is a much safer machine while I'm doing it. I'm going to illustrate 
couple different examples that you guys probably have run into with a trunnion out of adjustment or a fence out of adjustment. As I mentioned in the last video, safety. A properly tuned table saw is so much safer than an improperly tuned table saw. I made a few mistakes on this. Actually, I made this base part correctly the first time. I installed an aluminum insert basically to serve as a threaded insert, threaded this, and I had changed my mind mid-design and I was going to use some sort of repurposed cam lock on this lower section and it just didn't work out. So that's when the oak dowel came into play and I threaded that for a smaller size hole with that cam lock and it would just pull it out. I'd already cut this piece off of the body so I ended up threading the oak dowel for another knob. So <laughs> The indicator it itself, certainly not steric quality or Mitotoyu quality, but it has everything you need. Okay, it's a graduated dial of one zero to one inch, so you have two dials. The other dial will measure in one hundred thousandths increments around one full revolution of that. It's good quality for a twenty-five dollar indicator. Now, I've not been able to compare this to a Sterrett, but I'm not going to spend a lot of money to compare this uh, for a woodworker. We're not working with ten thousandths of an inch. We're working with thousandths of an inch, and maybe not even thousandths of an inch. It's been a super busy week. My better half, she has not been feeling well the last few days, and that was another reason why I didn't get to my trunnion adjustment, guys. But I want to thank you for sticking around. You guys are the rock stars that listen to me yammer on these vlog videos. So if you have a thing for craftsman tools, if you're on a budget, maybe you don't have a lot of money, maybe you work in a dungeon like me, maybe you have a tiny space, how about you guys subscribe to this channel, and if you do have a shop under 500 square feet, pop on over to my Facebook group. Link's in the description and maybe a caption right in there. Guys, again, you guys are rock stars. Leave me a comment. And, hey, guess how many 3-inch long blocks are in that 16 by 16 butcher block I make? Leave me a comment. And always, get out in your shop. Make some sawdust.